and welcome to episode 51 of Pausecast. If you're on the stream, this is probably a nightmare for a second there. I am Jessica Alouette, and I use she, her pronouns. And I'm Mark Henner, I use he, him. Welcome. Tonight, joining us as a special guest, we also have Ash Yi joining us again. Uh, Ash Yi was on... What episode were you on? You were on the episode with um, you were on the episode Autumn. with Autumn as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember what number that was, but yeah, you were on an episode with Autumn and me and Mark, and it was a very good episode. And yeah, we wanted to we have you back. Almost got killed by a falling mattress. So that's right. Yeah, yeah. That was so <laughs> ominous. Very ominous. It was a thing that happened, huh? I guess <laughs> looming over us the whole time. The extra member oh, of the God. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Unseen, unheard. Just ready to crush us if we mess it up. Yeah, and I mean, our audience will do that for us. I'm sure, at some point. <laughs> just they'll experience the crushing disappointment of just the content that we produce. Let's hope not. Uh, <laughs> that would be sad. Yeah, it would be. This is a video game podcast. And, you know, video games, I want to quote Justin McElroy here, video games, they're not just Pac-Man anymore. It's true. It's true. It's There's true. also um, Mrs. Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about that is, the thing about that is you actually, like, you may have unintentionally or completely intentionally leaned into like Griffin's follow up goose. Oh, seriously? No, I had no idea. Yeah, you did. No. Okay. <laughs> parallel creation, people. Uh. <laughs> this, is, this is the theory of parallel creation. Parallel except thinking. I'm directly c- quoting <laughs> the already created content. Unintentional plagiarism. <laughs> uh. Combined with completely intentional plagiarism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't played Pac-Man this week though. Uh, the machines okay. in the shop. I can't. I, I can. I can only think of like one place that even has an arcade machine. It's like a takeaway. I see it going by. On, like I go by on the bus, and I see that there's this arcade machine there. I'm like, huh. I can never make out what it is. I just know that there's an arcade machine in this takeaway shop, and I'm. And I constantly think to myself when I see it, oh, that's weird. Are there no actual arcades in Auckland? Oh, there is, like, there's the one at the cinema near us. There's, like, some in city center, I guess. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cinemas will sometimes have, like, time crisis and stuff, won't they? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's all near cinemas, the ones that I know of in Auckland. (laughs) Yeah, like, the the other one I can think of is, like, Sky City. And Sky City has a big arcade in it. Right. Um. So since we haven't played any arcade machines because all the just all the machines have been broken, what have we been playing? Uh, who wants to go first? I'm gonna say Ash. Ash, you go first. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what have you been What have you been playing this week? Just a shorthand for now. Just a shorthand. Yeah. Uh, you can, I mean, you can go into things. I've been playing a lot of Overwatch. Uh, unfortunately, perhaps. Um, oh, yeah, yep, yeah. feeling that very much. Yeah. I've been there with you. <laughs> uh, a lot of PUBG, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Finally have mm-hmm. a computer That's... that can actually run things, so I've been playing that a bit. Uh, it helps, right? It Believe helps me, so I know. Much. Like, oh <laughs> my god, just the Overwatch changes. I went from having a barely consistent, like, 28 frames a second to playing at 30 with, like, fully, like, full screen. And, oh my gosh, it's it's playable now. My performance you're, went up you're, significantly. You're playing at 60. Playing at 60. Hey, you're not playing at 30 frames per second. It's not like a two frame per second consistency increase. You're playing at an additional 30 frames. Yeah, it was like, I was playing in a severely windowed, barely 30 frame lowest graphics everything oh wow and now it's like playable now it's it's amazing <laughs> nice yeah it's and it's not even a particularly demanding game either yeah overwatch PUBG, uh final fantasy 12 a lot of final mm-hmm. fantasy oh you're still 12. playing it yeah it's like seeing an old friend again it's right really great it's, it's, how how far through it have you got um i am up to 
basically the last dungeon. Like, I think if I go into oh, the next thing, wow. it'll be the end of the game, yeah. Hadn't you only just, like, started it a month or so ago or something? Yeah, I started it, like, yeah, about a month ago, actually. Um, That's really good going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just, it took me months and months time. and months and months and months to get that far when I was playing 12 all those years ago. Well, here is, here's perhaps one of the reasons why I've gone through it so fast. It has the ability to, and this is, I think, a feature in most of the remastered Final Fantasy games, you can increase the speed of things by double speed or quadruple speed. Uh, tap of a button. Yeah, so and 12 you... has some quite slow combat because you can set it up to just do it automatically, right? So it's yeah. a bit hands-free and you can just speed it up. Yeah, so I've been playing at four times speed and I went back to normal speed just for a boss battle because mm -hmm. it was doing so many... The boss was doing so many like, status effects and stuff I hadn't accounted yeah. for and I needed to play it at normal speed to respond yeah. to those things. And it felt like playing in slow motion after that. <laughs> it, it is so slow to begin with. Um, but yeah, and I've come to the conclusion every turn-based RPG should have that option. Like, it's such a game changer. Um, Final Fantasy... Wait, wait. Turn-based or active time battle? Because uh, turn-based, right, kind of the speed doesn't really matter, does it? Because it, turn-based no, is the idea, like, there's no time pressure. Whereas ATB is stuff like you've got the, the bar filling up or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Those yeah. are the ones where you can get points where you're like, I'm just waiting. And especially when you can have automated stuff, like in 12, where you can say, you know, this person is going to act this way. It can feel really slow, yeah. Yeah. Totally well, get that. On two sides. Mostly, like, combat-wise, for the active time battle, definitely. But also <laughs> just movement in the world in general. I think I'm... I, when I first played Pokemon, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I was on an emulator on PC, and I made liberal use of the speed-up button... Yeah. But I always found kind of mm. silly dashing everywhere super quick. And I think they've handled it really well in the more recent games where they've just given different modes of movement. I mean, there was the bike in the first game, but, you know, they've done different sorts of bikes and roller skates and Pokemon you can ride on and stuff. And I think speeding, being able to let players traverse the world more quickly through in-game ways like that instead of ridiculously over <laughs> walking anim walking cycles, walking animations, I think that handles a lot better. Like the chocobos in Final Fantasy XV instead of like super sprinting through the wilderness. I, I prefer things totally like that, but, but I definitely agree, yeah. When, when games just have you like walking and running around, and 12 has got some really big areas. Yeah. Like, it can feel like, a, like it's really slow sometimes. Yeah, it's definitely something like... <sighs> First time playing a game, I wouldn't want to speed it up. I'd want to sort of experience it. But yeah. when it comes to doing like farming stuff or having to, um, I guess, go to different areas to hunt monsters or you know, wh whatever it is, hmm. sort of the optional content, then it becomes really, really useful because yeah, it can be really, really slow, take a really long time to get through anything. Um, Final Fantasy VII, when that re-released on PS4, um, they had a similar system and you could just run really, really fast and it made that <laughs> game so much better. <laughs> I've actually been seeing that. I've got it in my Steam library um, and oh, it's one of my favorite games, but I haven't played it in ages. And every time now I go through the library and look at what it's installed, I notice it and I'm like, oh, should I? But I know <laughs> that I'll want to like do just that game for ages. Yeah, for sure. I know, in my opinion, I think... 7, 10, and 12 are the best Final Fantasy games. And I'm just really glad that they've, in the, in the case of 10 and 12, have already gotten remasters and that 7's getting a full remake. Yeah, yeah. 12 never clicked for me quite as much as 7 and 10. Mm -hmm. um, but I definitely agree that 7 and 10 are... I'll, I'll agree they're in the top three. They're the top two of my top three. But I'll agree <laughs> with you about them being in the top three. All right, let's move on to Mark. What have you been playing this week? Right. I uh, <laughs> So I haven't played that much this week. I did go back to Stardew Valley and found a way to... I remember, remember I mentioned um, last week how I'd found it strangely not as relaxing as I'd thought. Um, I mm. found a way around that, and that is to stop caring. 
<laughs> so that was nice because I realized like, hey, it doesn't matter if I run a shitty farm. Like it doesn't have to run super smoothly. I can just actually do whatever I want. And that's the whole point of this game. So that helped a lot, actually. Um, and like, yeah, there's there's goals to reach towards, like the, the bundles that you mentioned last week. But I, I, I don't need to rush, especially when I'm doing it as a multitasking game. So that was a bit more relaxing. But uh, I've had a busy week that's had a lot of my evenings taken up by working on a um, submission for some other activism stuff I've been doing. So I haven't been playing that much stuff. I did try to... Um, I've been starting to get an urge to play a tactics game like XCOM, but with the XCOM 2 DLC coming out in just a couple of weeks, I am holding off because I, I don't want to uh, risk like wearing myself out on that sort of game right before I get the DLC. Um, mm, I fun. thought, look, looking through my Steam library, I thought, oh, there's Total War Shogun 2. I've got that game. I never really played it that much, but it's kind of strategy-ish. Maybe I should try that. Turns out it runs really badly on my laptop, despite being a pretty old game, so I didn't spend that long in it, unfortunately. Was it, like, did you muck with the settings all that much? Because, like, a lot of that would be stuff like unit sizes. No, which... uh, um, frankly, it was the loading times. Oh no, the loading times are bad no matter what. Yeah. Um, like I have a I have a really good PC and Total War Shogun 2's loading times are still bad. Yeah, so, I was surprised at that cuz I thought, them. you know, it's a fair few years old. I thought it would just be super quick and easy to run, but no, it was like minute plus long loading times. No, yeah, absolutely. It is it is quite bad. Like get yourself a drink. Get your phone. Like bring bring your phone. When you play Total War Shogun, just like bring your phone so you can like check Twitter on yeah. the in between while you wait for stuff to load because it's it's bad. How and much, when it's quite I a don't... complex game, so there's like seven tutorials I want to do first. That's, oh, that yeah. was just too many loading screens for me to think about, so I didn't end up spending much time in it. Yeah, that's fair. How much loading happens in an actual game? Like once you're already in. So oh um okay so once you're in a game, it's basically like you would have a load when you go between the campaign map and a real battle, but those load times are typically quite a bit shorter. Right. Okay. Yeah, the only loads I experienced were getting into the different tutorials um, and just loading the game to start with. Um, but yeah, they were enough to make me think, eh, I'll do something else. <laughs> like, it's not a <laughs> yeah, game no, I've just bought that I want to dedicate a bunch of time to or anything. It was just me looking through my is, Steam library. It is a great game. I really love Total War Shogun 2. The load times are unbearable. It is it is a nightmare, but it's also one of the best Total War games to exist at the moment. I mean, I enjoyed the tutorials so, I did. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really good once you like actually get into doing proper combat and the hmm. campaign and getting stuff like manipulated in the world mm -hmm. it's got really cool like map style to it um i actually the, the loading screens long as they were the art they had in the loading screens was pretty cool oh no beautiful beautiful yeah. art as well um great quotes and stuff as well honestly like some of the loading screen quotes are very good um a few from like sun Tzu's art of war um various like I think, is it Bushido poems? I could be wrong about that. But, um, yeah, they, they have really good loading screen quotes. Um, Total War Shogun 2 is good. Anything else? No, those are the only ones that I actually touched this week. It's been mostly Stardew Valley, but again, not a huge amount of it, just because my evenings have been taken up by other stuff. What about mm -hmm. you, though? What have you been playing? So, uh, like Ash, I've been playing Overwatch. That has been a on and off, deeply satisfying and deeply <laughs> frustrating experience. This I seems would to come up a as. lot when it, you talk about having played Overwatch. I mean, didn't you retire once because of it? I, um, we don't talk about that. I've done that a couple. <laughs> I've done that a couple times, though. Uh -huh. I'll be honest, just like because it's it has been bad. Um. Yeah, it it has it's not been good. A yeah, I mean, if a time. game's causing you more stress than enjoyment, it's time to take a break from it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like even even the beginning of this season was like, oh yeah, like everybody's kind of like everybody's doing dumb shit in the <laughs> early season. So maybe 
maybe hmm, maybe I just take a break for two weeks and I leave it alone. Mm. And I did that. Um, I'm glad that I did because it gave it gave me like a renewed fervor to jump back in and actually start doing the competitive stuff because I do really really enjoy that. Cool. Um, this season has been a nightmare. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk about that a little later. Uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Also on that list, mm-hmm. I've been playing that with Ash. I've been playing it solo, not so much in squads lately. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at Steam and I'm seeing a very, very cool mod, which I'm going to link to. Uh, I'm going to link right now. That is, it'll be in the show notes. If you are not listening to this live, and it'll be in Twitch chat. If you are listening to it live, but it is a it is a mod for Civ Six that adds mod leaders. Oh, okay. Pretty cool. Yeah, I'm gonna put that into the chat now. Um, like you can you can play as Altero and Civ Six or something, can you? Yeah, you can. Well, you can play as Mari specifically in right. Civ Six. Yes, that oh, would I be see. the addition of like fully mo- like these fully modeled characters. Wow, they're really and, well like, modeled. Scenes, like scenes, like yeah, they're extremely well modeled. Like I, I'm super into that. Um, yeah, like I said, that'll be in the show notes. It's in the Twitch chat right now, uh, if you want to see that. Uh, also on my list has been, like, Final Fantasy XIV Online, uh, Dark Souls 2, um, No Man's Sky, as well, is kind of a surprise return to... Really? Yeah, because, um, okay. I want to have a bigger discussion about No Man's Sky, and I'm probably going to have that happen next week. I'm going to try and get Yard Gnome who was previously on the podcast back. I'm going to try and get uh, Hana, who was also previously on the podcast, back so that we can all talk a uh, No Man's Sky. Okay. That game just got a big patch. Uh, It was called Atlas Rising, which added a whole new story. It added a... um, It added enhanced textures and stuff like that. Like, they've made the game look... Much prettier, new biomes, uh, additional stuff for base building, portals, uh, and basic multiplayer. Wait, 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 multiplayer. wait, 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 wait. Portals as in, like, portal portals? Yeah, you could, like, return to other parts of the universe in an instant kind of situation. Can you get a portal gun? You cannot get a portal gun. This isn't Valve's portal series. But... <laughs> Half Life Three confirmed. <laughs> I did. I did stutter twice before I said the word that adds up to three. <laughs> <sighs> okay, that, that so is, a whole um, bunch of new stuff. Yeah, a whole bunch of new stuff in this big patch, including like the, the multiplayer that a lot of people were upset was removed from the final, uh, like, on disc version of the game, even the like post patch version of the game um just yeah it wasn't it wasn't a great situation at launch no man's sky was not a game that a lot of people were happy with and now that this version has launched there's been like a massive uptick in how many people are enjoying it because they've brought so much to the table oh fantastic uh yeah so i know that i i think the folks over at hello are very happy with the work that they've done at this point um, and I know they still have kind of more in the works, but it's it's become my de facto chill out game because, like, we're in a we're in a point where I think we need that. Yeah, we need that like that self care game, like one of them. Um, and like No Man's Sky has become my de facto self care game. Yeah, I saw, a, good. I saw a joke Twitter headline that was like, gamers are finally ready to remember who Sean Murray is and also ready to forgive. Yeah, that was, <laughs> uh, that's from Point and Clickbait, which I'll also, I'll find that as well. Um, point and Clickbait is a very good um, satire site. Um, yeah, from the outside looking in, it seems like this patch added in like a bunch of content that was originally perhaps meant to be in the game when it launched and wasn't. And yeah. I think people who were kind of, yeah, 
quite disappointed with the game. Like, oh, this is this is what we paid for, and it's finally been sort of realized. So hopefully, that even. S- hmm? Um. Oh, sorry, I interrupted you. You keep talking. I was gonna say, just like it's still not my kind of game. I I kind of dunk on it a bit. Um, but I I hope that like sites will do a re-review kind of like they did with Taken King with Destiny. Be like, okay, now a year on with this giant update, maybe it's time to mm. review it. I'm even seeing like I'm looking at some I'm looking at Steam Spy for it right now, which is like a Steam kind of tracking service of sorts. There's been a huge uptick in the amount of like players and like the concurrent users as well. Like it's gone up to about 20,000 people playing it from 1,000 on a daily basis. Like, huge, huge increases in how many people are playing this game. And I think it, I think it is, like, that patch making good on stuff that, like... I disagree that it was maybe, you know, like, announced to be there, but I think a lot of people did have those... Ex- I, I disagree. Uh, like... I think people had those expectations. I do not necessarily think that they were unreasonable expectations to have, but that the hype may have been too high. But I hype like, was no, very much g- that game's problem. Yeah, hype hype was this game's kind of downfall, and now I think we I think we're going to start to see an uptick in just kind of. How many people are actually enjoying and appreciating uh, this game? The reviews of the user reviews on Steam have actually gone up from mostly negative at three point, like, or sorry, thirty four percent, to a mostly positive at seventy six. Is that the recent so, reviews section? Yeah, that's the recent reviews nice. is now seventy six percent positive. Also, just that's real just quick, the, the, uh, since Sean Murray got mentioned, I googled it, and holy shit, I've played this game, the wakeboarding game. game. Wakeboarding Unleashed featuring Sean Murray. I've played it. I recognize is, it. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's not, that's not the right Sean Murray. Okay. Well, I Googled <laughs> it and I found a game thing and I was like, what the fuck is this? Holy shit, I've played this. Anyway, no, continue. It, it, Sean Murray is also a video games composer. Oh. Who did the, he did the score for um, the original Call of Duty Black Ops. Okay. I, I must I have spelled Sean wrong. No, I don't. I don't know that you did. Well, there's different. Uh, this, I did S H A U N. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting off track. Uh, okay. I just yeah, wanted to mention yeah. that, that because is... I found a YouTube video. I'm like, oh wow, I actually played this. It was bad. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Back to No Man's Sky. <laughs> yeah, No Man's Sky is good. I'm really enjoying um, playing that again. I also briefly today revisited the old Sonic games just because I had a quick opportunity at lunch to like I was I was working from home today. And so on my lunch, I had the quick opportunity to just jump into Sonic for a little bit because Sonic Mania just came out. That game looks good. Um, and I wanted to like revisit the old Sonic games very briefly. Those games are still fun. Nice. Uh, they don't have saves, which is baffling to they me. They don't have saves? Yeah, they don't have saves like at all. Is it just like a level selector or something? No, I don't even know if it's that. Like, you got to go through that whole game in one shot because it's not like a long game. Wow. Like, I think I think most Sonic games on your like completionist run, like, or sorry, on the complete run, you can do it in like twenty minutes, thirty oh, okay. minutes. In like the old Sonic games, like it's definitely doable in one sitting, but definitely also very challenging. Are there any level like codes? That. Like, I know a lot of old school games would have like. Once you beat a certain level or reach a, reach a certain place in the game, they give you a code that you could enter in and skip to that level. Like the old Looks Crash like Bandicoot games be. had that, and like uh, the Lion King game had that, which was infamously quite difficult. Yeah, it looks like there is like a zone select and stuff, and a bunch of Game Genie codes. <laughs> There's like a debug mode. That's weird. Huh. Did you all get right. all the way through it when you played it? No, I didn't. I just had a quick visit to play Sonic 1 and briefly Sonic 2. 
I, right. those, those games are like, they, they were fun in the little bit that I went back to them on. Mm-hmm. Um, I might spend a little bit more time with them this week. Nice. <sighs> yeah. That wraps, that wraps that little kind of bit up. Do we have anything in the inbox this week? We do not have anything in the inbox this week. If you want to add something to the inbox, you can do so by emailing us, podcastshow at gmail.com. Uh, if you send something to the inbox, we will read your question on the air and try and answer it for you. Um, so I want, to, I want to get into a little discussion about... I want to do Overwatch a little later. I want to get into mm-hmm. Player Unknowns uh, Battlegrounds right off the bat. So, um, me and Ash have been playing like a lot of Player Unknowns Battlegrounds. That game is rapidly approaching like a hundred hours on my Steam, um, on my Steam account, and that yeah. is impressive, considering the the highest game still remains Left 4 Dead 2 at like a hundred fifty hours. So, like, it's not far off of being I mean, in the fifty hours is a big gap. I know, but it's not it's it's not super far off from being the most played game in my Steam library, and I have no doubt it will surpass that. Fair enough. Yeah, and I imagine you don't is... have a huge number of a hundred plus hour games. No, I have like five of them. I mean that's that's and... actually quite a few. <laughs> actually, actually I might have I might have six or seven, because like I have to think about stuff that's not on Steam and that's oh, like of course, Super of course. Smash Bros. I have like 300 hours in across that whole series. Oh, I mean, I don't um, even want to think about how much time I've spent in Monster Hunter games. Every uh, one of those I've played, hours. I've spent over 150 hours in, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, Elder Scrolls is a, is a pretty rough contender Oh, for me. yeah. You just spent, like, an, you spend an in order... You spend just so <laughs> much time on every single game that you play, though, because you are that platinum hunter. I am. I... Thing. I I should have said it when we were talking about Final Fantasy XII, but I spent two hours on the title menu um, trying to figure out who I should, which characters I should give which job. <laughs> so there are six yep, that's characters. Oh, that's right, because, it's got an, because the remake has got the job system now, right? Yeah, so there are six mm-hmm. characters, and you can give two jobs to each character, and there are 12 different jobs. So I'm sitting there just like, hmm... Uh, this person's stats would make her a good black mage, but I also want to have her be this. But then, hmm. Uh, Balthier comes with a gun in the main game, but he actually has a slight reload and like an extra, an additional animation when he attacks, which won't be good in high level battles. So I'll switch him to two hours. Three spreadsheets later. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it, yeah. I had a lot <laughs> of sticky notes up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, uh, over 150 hours in Persona. So yeah, I I put like quite a bit of time into games. Mm. Yeah, you do. Um, back on topic, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. <laughs> we have we've played a lot of that game. That game is very reliant on like you being you having like tactics and working together with your squad. If you are playing in a setting where it's more than just you. You have to be aware of kind of everything around you and how you're approaching various things, and you know try try your best to work together and develop strategies on the fly to figure out what's gonna be happening next. And sometimes that doesn't always work out. Um, I'm gonna call this tactical tension. <laughs> That works. It's, it's got alliteration to it, just a little bit, and I like that. But um, tactical te- tactical tension or tactical torsion also, because I'm referring to the phenomenon of when players' tactics get all twisted up, um, and then that ends up causing immense pain. <laughs> Uh, in the case of me and Ash, we actually ended up having a we ha- ended up having an argument in which <laughs> I brought in a notepad and had to like draw. I was like drawing things that I was like, "You didn't understand this and this and this." And, and this, we, is this at the point where you both got shot in the game? No, no, no. We had just after, gotten shot. That's the important. Yeah, we had. <laughs> so we it's had not just because Jess was shot. showing you something on a notepad. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was it was 
actually, like, we had just gotten shot, and it was because of a communication breakdown and a tactics breakdown that we both managed to get, like, isolated and killed. And so, because because of the communications breakdown, I then, like, brought in a notebook and started, like, drawing the situation and trying to explain a thing that I thought that Ash didn't understand. <laughs> because we just, like, we didn't have a set of tactics that was gelling between us at all mm -hmm. and it wasn't helping our game and so we had to like i i like sat down over the next day and like figured out what the major problems with the like where the where the tactics were colliding and then adjusted to uh, like ad adjusted how i've been playing i've tried to i think have i been pushing you to i, I think i have to like try and adjust your tactics also yeah, yeah. So but the biggest sort of clash in our tactics is playing duos mode. So that's like two person teams. And mm -hmm. my thing is like, oh, we should probably try and like stick together and generally not move like on top of each other, but like stay pretty close together most of the mm -hmm. time in case we encounter people, then we can um, revive each other if one of us goes down and also take on other duos as a team. Um, Can you remind me, if one person goes down and you're not playing solos, you, the, the teammate can get them back up in yeah. certain circumstances, There's a limited right? period of time. Where yeah, they're... yeah. so once, you, once you're knocked down um, as a duo, um, if, you, if, someone kill, if someone kills you, uh, you are knocked down and you can still like crawl around a little bit. Mm -hmm. But you're constantly bleeding out. If you bleed out of that state, then you are permanently killed. Yep. This can also be helped along by players continuing to just shoot at you after they knock you down. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Okay. But yeah, the main Sorry, thing... No, 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 not at all. It was more like, hey, we should probably try and stick together because of XYZ and Jess preferred Where, to play Whereas more. my tactic is very much like... I'm constantly thinking about where I'm moving. I'm constantly thinking about actually actively moving and trying to like push forward and push ahead. And so I was moving away from Ash very, very fast a lot. And that was getting us into situations where we'd look at the we'd look at the map and we'd be separated by a couple hundred meters and then one of us would get killed and then nobody could do anything to revive. Because mm -hmm. we were just too far away, so by the time they got over, the other team had already advanced on my position and just obliterated me. We still run into situations like that on occasion, just like, there's sometimes just nothing that can be done to revive your teammates. Like, we, we've definitely had situations where, um, if you get knocked out inside of the, inside of the, um, circle, like, if you're, if you're, um, being damaged... Because you're outside oh, the play zone. Outside it, yep. Yeah, if you're getting damaged outside the play zone, you will get knocked down, or sorry, you'll get killed from the knockdown state much faster, and at a certain point, yep. there's no longer any, like, point or value in trying to revive that other player, mm -hmm. because they'll just take so much damage that as soon as they get up, they're revived with, like, 10% health, so they'll just be going down again instantly, and they'll bleed out faster. And you'll so be hurting yourself gonna... to get to them too. Exactly. So nobody's going to be making any progress. So you can still end up with situations like that where that happens. Um, it's it's tricky to determine whether to like leave a player behind or not in situations like that. Like if you're outgunned, um, then you either make a stand or you try and get away, hmm. and. Yeah, so it, it can be it can be definitely difficult to try and figure out your tactics in those moments where someone has gone down and you need to figure out what your next move is. It's interesting. I, I find in the multiplayer games that I play, um, it tends which to become... Which is Monster Hunter. Which is, which is mainly Monster Hunter, but also like Dying Light I've been playing. And right, I, know, yeah. I know a bit about some of the multiplayer games I haven't played as much or as recently. 
but it, um, it often becomes pretty clear, you know, this person is playing this role, this person is playing this role. Like I've, I've mentioned on the show before that when my flatmate and I play Dying Light, we'll often, even though we have the exact same skill set, we'll start adopting different roles. Like, oh, I'm going to pick this lock and you defend me from zombies, that sort of stuff. In hmm. Monster Hunter, it's like, I've got the bladed weapon, so I'll aim for the tail because I can cut it off. Um, you've got the aerial style, so you try to mount it. But hey, only do it at this point because that's when you can knock them down and we can break this monster part, that sort of stuff. And different people are trying to do different things. You know, if too many people attack the tail with the wrong sort of weapon, you'll be knocking each other over and all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. In both of those cases, though, so in Monster Hunter, it depends. You know, when you go on a mission, you've chosen your weapon, you've chosen your style. Um, in Dying Light, it's kind of like very quick, very easy. You're in the same position that can be... Either of us will decide to pick the lock and the other will fight off the zombies, except I always end up picking the locks because Ken is really slow at it. Mm. <laughs> um, but in this game, right, you start at the same point, but then you'll each find different loot, right? So do you find you fall into different roles each time or are you like, oh, this weapon is better for you than me, so you pick it up and you can do that and then I'll go and I'll get this, I don't know what items there are, body armor, whatever. Does that sort of thing happen or or... or? Not, There's a know. little bit of that, I'd say. Especially, like, I think, earlier on when I was... I, I'm still not good at the game by any means, but <laughs> early on in particular, I was like, oh, I found a sniper rifle in a four-time scope. I'm probably going to miss every shot. Here, Jess, you do this. <laughs> but now it's I know more that like... Feeling, yeah. yeah. I'm not better, but I'm just trying to get better, so if I find something like that, I'll keep it. But there's a lot of... Mm-hmm. Oh, I only have... Uh, a submachine gun you have a better rifle i'll give you the scope it's you're better off having that and like a lot of mm. oh you have a shotgun you maybe breach this house first and then i'll cover you from the back or, yeah so yeah like, yeah i see it's it's a lot of adaptive roles like it's it's much less rigid than something like overwatch mm-hmm. which has a very clear set of four roles which would be your offense which are focused on like Allow, uh, allowing your team to push forward. Defense, which is focused on your team controlling an area. So it's a lot of like heroes like Bastion who can turn into a turret and like fix himself at a location. And May, who can freeze opponents in place. It's all area control. Uh, tanks, lots of damage, self-explanatory. They can take hits forever. Shields, typically... Uh, sorry to Roadhog, who is dead. Um, R.I.P. R.I.P. Um, Ash used to play Roadhog a lot. No shields, but powerful hook. Um, and then supports. There's nothing quite as rigid as that in PUBG, though. Like, yeah, I don't imagine you've got just... tanks. <laughs> no, there's... I mean, sort of, I guess, if you want to count, like people who have like body armor or maybe have access to a vehicle as a tank. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, like that's, that stuff. I could, I could see you becoming a little bit tankier and then like trying to be a little bit more aggressive at close range. But generally when we're playing, I think we try and keep each other as balanced as we can. So like if, if we are looking to be like, if we're if in a typical situation, I'll I'll be looking for trying to have a, like a shotgun and an assault rifle of some sort, so that we have something for breaching power and something with a little bit more range. So it sounds like with a lack of rigid roles that either either person's going to fall into, it's better um, for you both to aim for maintaining versatility. Yeah, absolutely. Like versatility is your best friend in PUBG because everything is random drops. Mm. And because everything is random drops, you can't predict what a match is going to be like until you're on the ground. And then you have to start thinking about your adaptive tactics and your overall strategy for that match. Overall strategy even is like very, very much on the like low end of the scale. It's all thinking very tactically, thinking what's our next, like, couple of moves, maybe. Where are we moving to? What's our strategy for getting up on this building? Um, And then occasionally, like, being adaptive when people are out in the open. And 
like we have a clear shot. Do we want to engage? Just like second to second choices to make. Mm-hmm. That's a good game. Mm-hmm. Oh. Overwatch. Ash, do you want to introduce a little bit of Overwatch? <laughs> Overwatch was a mistake. Next game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. Um, do you want to get started with like the new stuff in the game or straight to comp? Well, I, I mean, sure, Doomfist happened. Like, Doomfist isn't competitive. He's got it's a lot a of... bad name. It's it's because he has a big like mechanical fist of doom. I get it. It's a bad <laughs> yeah. Name. That's it. It's just he he took on like a super villain identity. Is kind of why that is the name of the character. It's because he's got like this. He's got a very super villain personality. But I mean, he's like middle teeth from James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> gold finger. But did he actually have a gold finger? Did gold finger have a gold finger? Like, was that I think it's just like their thing? Didn't he? I don't know. I don't watch game, James Bond. <laughs> James Bond. James. Is that what I said? <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh. Anyway, uh, yeah, Doomfist was added. James Bond, name of the episode. <laughs> oh, no. no. He, he's, quite, he's quite fun to play. Um, a lot of movement skills. But very very actually, fun to play. Can I, can I suggest that Doomfist is a bad name, so we just refer to him as James Bond. <laughs> okay. <laughs> James Bond was added to the game. Um, yes. <laughs> stuff that just came out today, um, nothing's been confirmed yet, but uh, apparently a new level called Junker Town is going to be added, which is going to be like a Roadhog Junkrat sort of. But isn't it's- that the character you guys just said had died? Yeah, yeah, we just we said it's that they be died because they for him, I think. they um they died in the meta. Like nobody's really playing them anymore because they took out a lot of the damage dealing powers that Roadhog had. Oh, I thought it would have been like they've it, added this new character and then Games Bond killed the old <laughs> character. No, no, no. So what happens? So what happened to Roadhog was, uh, Roadhog used to be able to pull people in with the hook, and then he also has a shotgun. And okay. you could one-hit kill almost anybody that you pulled in with the hook. Um, so the first big change to Roadhog was they adjusted the hook and how it works to make it more fair, which totally, like, it works a lot better now uh, for people on both sides. Uh, the next thing that they did, though, was they made it so that he can't really one-hit kill anybody anymore after hooking, so you have to use your teammates... Like, you have to use your teammates and be coordinated with them as the Roadhog in order to be getting those kills after hooks. So anyone who's and been used to playing that character is not used to doing that. Presumably. Exactly. Yeah, it's he's become a hero you can't really play um, in, like, solo queue games or games that don't have a lot of communication because you used to be able to play him as... He's in the tank category, he has a lot of, he's high health, but he's not really... A tank in the same case as the other heroes. No, sh- no shields are like real blocking abilities. Just the ability to kind of like pick off and isolate individual heroes. Yeah, and which was like it's very cool, and he can take a lot of damage in the process and like be on the front lines. Absolutely, but then those changes happened, and they made it so he more or less just like. He's charging the other team's ultimate abilities, making it much easier for them to push back against you, and he's not doing a lot of damage, and there's not a lot of coordination from basically anybody who's playing with a Roadhog, so it's just, it's become a character who is no longer popular to play. Yeah, like, he he could reasonably start getting played again, like, a a little while from now, but yeah, it's gonna require a lot of um, teamwork and particularly the level Jess and I stuck at that's not really a thing that happens all too often <laughs> yeah no I I like to call um, healing babysitting at this level <laughs> um, 
it's very much in I'm very much in that position where like oh yeah I don't trust any other healers to do the like job of healing so I guess I can't really play any of the heroes I actually want to because I have a job to do this is my life yeah just mentioned this team for um this team's not going anywhere four categories of hero but in bronze are really just like offense and tank <laughs> That's pretty much it. <laughs> You're lucky if you can get a tank half the time. Um, but oh. Yeah, Junker Town, which could be a Junkrat Roadhog inspired map, which would be very cool because they're already got sort of Mad Max kind of vibe, like a postal, like sort of a wasteland kind of vibe. So I reckon it'd be a really okay. cool looking map potentially set in Australia. So. That could be cool. It's absolutely going to be set in Australia. It's going to be... Junker Town is going to be the ruins of Brisbane. Is what that's going to be. I Actually, would like to see just... Brisbane in ruins. It's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, it, it, to be fair, yeah. Queensland has elected Pauline Hanson twice. In two uh, separate decades. Yeah. So, okay. I'm not sure if, if... People won't know who she is, but she's she's a... She's a politician who I'll put it that way. That's I had a reminder of who she is with that news today. That oh, she wore the. I don't even really want to talk about it. Yeah. Oh. Bad. Can I can I give a quick summary so that people yeah, don't yeah, have to go, go look go at? Go for it. Sorry. Okay, so I'm this shitty PM from Australia, who's just the worst and a nightmare, and I hate her. Just like as a person, not she's PM. Deplorable. Did you say PM? Not, not PM. Or no, MP. sorry, MP, 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 yep. MP. Got the letters mixed up. Um, just like wore a wore the uh, burqa, which is a Muslim um, full face covering. Um, it's like a, it's kind of a thing, and some Muslim women choose to wear the burqa. Uh, she wore it to Parliament to protest. Oh, sorry, to uh, fight for um, full face covering uh, bans in public. She was trying to make a point. It was just horrible. By doing that. It's 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 Islamophobic. Yep. It's racist. Pauline Hansen is a nightmare. Fuck Pauline Hansen. She can go rot in a hole somewhere. Walk directly into the sea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's bad. Um Yeah. Theresa May, also please walk directly into the sea. Thank you. This has been this has been my political soapbox. Continue. <laughs> um, but yeah, Overwatch. Oofa doofa. Um, yeah, it's. <sighs> we as just you mentioned, we had a bit of a bad run, and it's it's reminding me why I've historically avoided like team based sports and games in the past, yeah. and why I prefer single player games because like other multiplayer games can be stressful and intense sometimes. But they aren't mm-hmm. as frustrating because generally they don't have a competitive mode. For example, right. like a loss in a Battlefield game or in Titanfall 2 or Destiny or whatever is ultimately kind of meaningless in that each match is its own self-contained event with no bearing on other I mean, matches. It's, it's sort in of the like, long run, isn't every Overwatch match meaningless? Yeah, well, the thing is, that's like that's like the most nihilistic view of yeah. that. <laughs> Everything's <Sorry>. dark. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, now that. we now we've gone full nihilism. Okay. Let's bring it back. <laughs> um, uh, Overwatch has like a competitive ladder, which means that each loss you lose SR and drop further down the ladder, which means you get matched with even less confident players, and the bulk of the frustration lies in the fact that. Like, regardless of how well you play as an individual, it's a team game. So mm-hmm. if the rest of your team is not playing well, grouping together properly, picking the right heroes for the situation, willing to switch if something isn't working, like, nine out of ten times it's going to result in a loss. And the one time it doesn't is usually because the other team was doing the same thing, just even worse. <laughs> so... so- you can play together with your friends, though, right? And, I mean, you might not have enough for a full match, but I imagine it helps to have the two of you playing at the same time. It does a little, but, like, there's only so much that two people can do in a six-person game. Yeah. Is like, that that six-person per side? Mm-hmm. Or... Yeah, six-person per okay. side. Yeah. 
Like, like if it was the two of us in a like three v three situation, yeah. Then like yeah, we'd be carrying most of the team, and that would be okay. We can have like a slightly weaker third link. But when we make up only just a third of the team and there's four other people who also need to fulfill their roles, it can be a profoundly frustrating experience when nobody else on the team seemingly or actually is fulfilling their roles. And like, and when, all it like, can take is one person not doing what they're supposed to for it to just collapse. Like, Oh yeah, absolutely. Like... Over Overwatch is it's as a team game, it's structured so beautifully because one member of the team, one switch can make all the difference for your team because every character has variations on their role and how they do it. So like some heroes have bullets that hit instantly and they're really good against the characters that are flying and don't have a lot of like support from the ground necessarily. Um and then you have other ones that can just like they they have they do the flying around and they shoot rockets and they can deal a lot of splash damage and stuff like that. Everybody's got variations on their roles to mm-hmm. play. And so when one variation is swapped out for another, then it really really can make all the difference going from like say a sniper on attack, which is like a class typically reserved for area control. Um then going into a uh, a role which is more focused on like disrupting and bringing teammates kind of away from each other on their side so they can kind of be picked off by the other team like that single role switch that single variation switch can just make all the difference and so when people don't switch it becomes really frustrating and we had a series of just very bad games um, I had a very long session over the weekend where I was trying to kind of increase my rank. I was about mid thirteen or late thirteen hundreds. I was aiming for fifteen hundred, and over the course of a like six hour session, I got up to like fourteen ninety two, and then uh, the next day when we went and, and that's, played, that's fourteen ninety two as in the threshold is fifteen hundred. The threshold for the next rank was 1,500, and that was what I was aiming for. And then there was a couple losses, and I was like, okay, that's probably enough for tonight. And then the next time we booted up, I was like, okay, we're going to hit 1,500. And then I dropped lower than I had gotten after that, like, that I had after that, like, before that six-hour session started. And it was just, it was, like, a lot of very poor teamwork, it was a lot of kind of all contributing factors, but it was so very, very disheartening to see like all that effort have just gone to waste because I've worked so hard at improving my skills in this game so much this season. And it's just kind of all, it went all to shit. I swear every night. time, every time we talk about Overwatch, you remind me of how much I don't want to play it. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> like the character design and, and all that stuff is really cool. It looks really pretty and, and well thought out and stuff, but it's not a game for me. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. It's it's I, a game I, where like the quick play and arcade and stuff is really, really fun. And like even if I took out my competitive hours, I've still gotten like quite a lot of mileage from Overwatch just from playing that stuff. And I've had a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, with for it, sure. Especially when you play with your friends. But I think I, the longer you play it, the less that stuff appeals to you. And you're like, oh, I want to. I've been playing this game for a long time, and I've gotten good at it. I want to, want to try my luck in competitive. And then, hmm. yeah, like I, I actually want to go ahead and like, you know, bring. I want to bring myself up in competitive, and I want to like. Be pl- I want to be playing this because I, I, I enjoy the thrill of the competition rather than, like, you know, kind of the game on a purely mechanical level. It brings it to this, like, level of deeper appreciation. And competitive play doesn't always mean satisfying play, unfortunately. Because <laughs> um, not quite as many people take it as seriously 
which is, you know, just a shame. Yeah, I, I feel like, you know, I'd watch it as a cartoon. I'd like I'd watch, <laughs> I'd watch a cartoon. But yeah, no, there, there's lots of that at game. least. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it can be, it can be a... Uh, yeah, it, it can be a frustrating experience. Hmm. Oh, and the other thing, there's an event on for Overwatch at the moment. Oh, yeah, the event is good. Like a summer uh, games event? Oh, so it's everyone's winter? in togs and stuff? Yep, basically. <laughs> like, and oh, yeah. and they're, adding a new, they're, they're adding a new map set in Australia, and they're having a summer event in the middle of winter. <laughs> yep, I think that's that's the gist. I've uh, in protest. I've equipped as much of the like winter event skins as I could possibly <laughs> get. Yeah. Um. So yeah. I mean, I can understand how they do, they will want to do separate summer and winter events instead of doing all the work for one thing. Like it's it's more to do for a single event, but. <sighs> well, there's no, like, Oceana server either. Hmm. So, like, not really anything you can do about it, unfortunately. I can sit here and grump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Wait, what has no Oceana server? Sorry? Oh, uh, Overwatch. Overwatch. Oh, right. it's just, it all runs on the America's servers because Blizzard doesn't have OS in their like, server structure. Right, right. Neither does Final <laughs> Fantasy XIV online, which is a bit frustrating. But... Oh. Mm. That's a shame. Yeah, no, we've been, we've been playing that on um, North America. It's weird. That's I would have expected a, a Japanese game to have sort of be better with that because, you know, Australia is often lumped in with Asia, but. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Just it, it's, it seems weird to not have Oceania sort of stuff when you're closer than America's. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's. I think the average, if you're playing in Australia, New Zealand, is about 150 ping if you're lucky. Um, oh, that's not very good, is it? No, it's like it's playable. So far, it's been playable, but. Mm-hmm. There are AOE attacks in the game that sort of get telegraphed a bit. Like, you'll get a little, I guess, indicator, um, like, underneath you or whatever when it's being done, so yeah. you have time to move. And yeah. you have to get out of it quite quickly with this level of ping. Like, if you... You, know, you, you can see the little bar, give, see, like, see how much time you have to move, and you have to move, like, a lot quicker than the bar fills up because... If you try and leave it till it gets closer and jump out, just because of a lag, you're just going to get hit anyway. Oh, yeah, that and sounds frustrating. It's manageable at lower levels when you're dealing with like one or two enemies at once, and it's mm-hmm. quite a small area, but some of the bosses have like massive, like huge AOE things, and they're like, like hard like raid-level bosses, so they can kill you quite easily and we haven't tried to do anything like that yet but it could be it could be rough getting up there yeah mm-hmm. it could be could be troublesome mm-hmm. huh hmm? oh sorry I was just looking at my like I was just looking at like overwatch stats that I have right now <laughs> I'm in the top Seven percent on quick play win percentage. How do you check that? Uh it's Overwatch Tracker. Uh. Is what the site is called. Um Hi. So, thank you for listening to Pausecast. This is a show about video games that happens every week. If you want to get in contact with the show, you can do so and uh get your question possibly read on the air by going to email podcastshow at gmail.com. Uh, we have a Patreon. If you would like to consider supporting the show, we'd really appreciate it. Um, at some point in the near future, uh, we'd like to get our gear upgraded, and we'd also like to be able to pay our hosting costs through our Patreon. Um, 
that is a goal I've set, I believe, for the end of September. Um, so October by October 1st, I want to have reached our first goal of $15 a month. Anything that you can do to help get us there would be great. A dollar a month is very helpful. Thank you to our patrons, Ash Yee. Thank you. Welcome. Um, <laughs> um, as well as Noah Holmes, PD, and Residoc. Oh, Thank and you. Laminated Moth as well. Thank you for supporting the show. Your continuing support of the show means a lot. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned last week, uh, we've moved all our hosting over from SoundCloud to Libsyn. Our SoundCloud is now pretty well disabled. Um, so that change will have happened in the background. Anybody who's listening through a podcatcher, such as Pocket Casts, iTunes, uh, that will all be uh, just... It'll all have happened. You don't. You have can to tell because anything. you listen to the show. Yeah, you can tell because you're actively listening to the show now. If you can't listen you know to the show because going. it hasn't happened, you then go switch it over. You can't. You know. No, you can't switch that over. Uh, <laughs> there'll be more detailed show notes and stuff too. So when we reference the show notes, you can start actually looking in them. And uh, yeah, we have. I've got more control over that, and that was kind of the big reason for the switch. It was good. Um. We are on Twitter with the show, at Pausecast Show. We are live every week on Twitch, Thursday at 8 p.m. New Zealand Standard Time. Uh, that's at twitch.tv slash cockatielcutie, or more simply, live.bird.school. Much easier to remember. Uh, yeah, yeah we're, on, we're on Twitter at Pausecast Show, facebook.com slash Pausecast Show. And that's kind of our internet presence. Mark, you're yeah. online. Where can people find you? Yep. I'm on Twitter at Honest Universe, and I blog as well, though not about video games, at honestuniverse.com. You want to talk a little bit about what you've been doing this week? Because you like referenced, oh, you referenced yeah, your so... activism stuff earlier, and I want, I want you to talk about this stuff, because I think it's important. Sure. Um, so I'm the chair of an anti-pseudoscience activism group. We go after misleading health ads and stuff like that. Um, and in 2014, we complained to the pharmacy regulator in New Zealand about a pharmacy that sold someone um, who would talk to a product that doesn't work, and they didn't realize that they'd got home. It was for their kid. And they weren't really happy with that. So we complained because the code of ethics at the time said you can't sell anything in a pharmacy unless it's credible evidence of efficacy, which is a good rule. But they didn't want to enforce it, and they decided to review that part of their code of ethics. So in 2015, we submitted on that. They went away with all of the feedback they've got and spent two years deciding to redo the whole code, and they've put out the draft revised code, which they're now getting submissions on. So the submissions are due 5 p.m. tomorrow, so I've been trying to get ours all polished off because I want to send it off tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's what that is. It's all trying to fight quackery. Good on ya. Um, Ash, you're online. Where can people find you? Um, Twitter, at the clearest air. All right. And you can also find Ash, if you're watching live, um, we're going to be doing a Player Unknown's Battlegrounds after show. Uh, starting at 10. So if you want to watch, that's in a half an hour from now. Uh, if not, we we sometimes do this on our live shows. If you want to want to catch that, tune in sometime. Yeah, if you're watching, uh, feel free be... to stream Snipe. Um, everybody else in the game, because we need the help. <laughs> yeah, no, if, if you can find someone else who happens to be in our game, please go stream Snipe them. Um, <laughs> don't actually do that. <laughs> no, please don't. There's like a whole, that's like, it's like a whole debate actually within the PUBG community, but it's also been codified in the like code of conduct. Like, oh yeah, don't, don't stream snipe or you can get banned. And they added a reporting function to the game. And like uh, a while back, um, Brendan Green talked about his experiences with like people threatening violence online. And mm. like, it's so clear that like Brendan is like, guy who knows like internet communities and he grew up in like he grew up and knows hostile gaming communities inside and out and mm -hmm. wants to do better 
And so like it's it's great to see like hardline stances on like shitty people. So from... sorry, is is this is Brendan Green is he, he the guy he behind is player PUBG? unknown. Okay. Sorry. That's the context yeah. I was I thought I might be yeah. missing. Yeah, so he is player unknown. The fact that like essentially the creator of the most popular game this year, the most streamed game this year, uh has like taken this hardline stance is not something that like goes unmissed. Yeah, it's really good. Like it's it it is something that people take notice of. It's something that I take notice of. And like I have a huge amount of respect as someone who also has passion for making kind of better online communities. Yeah, actually, definitely. oh yeah, I, I want to talk about this as well. Okay. Uh, recently, I was given um, I was given leadership of feminist war cult. Oh, cool! So I've I've been upgraded just from community manager to now the leader of that community, and that's a huge responsibility for me to take on. And it's a huge, like, it's, it's a responsibility that I take very seriously. I take my position within FWC and I take my, like, ability to make better communities. I take all of this seriously. Mm, I mean absolutely. it. And so seeing this also from, seeing this sort of stance from, like, I, again, just the creator of the most streamed game this year, what is almost certainly at this point going to be my game of the year, like, it's. I think it has honestly kind of beaten out Breath of the Wild, <laughs> which okay, is a wild. Well. It's, it's a wild thing for me to say, but I, I think Player Unknowns is, is looking like it's my game of the year at the moment. That is a crazy thing to say, and I'm so excited that devs are, like a dev is able to take that sort of hardline stance and on these sorts of issues. I think it's good. Definitely. <sighs> Been a lot of talking this episode. <laughs> kind of as always, like I don't know. I I really want to get to a point where we can also have, I guess, more people on to do talking because I don't want to be the only voice that people are listening to here. I don't think you're only the, you're the only voice, but when you're talking, it's good stuff. So we listen as well. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate that's all that. it is. Except um, for those times I interrupt. I keep doing it. Like the last two times I've spoken, I've spoken at the same time. Okay, your turn. No, it's fine. I swear. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, yeah, I, I appreciate that. Thank you to Leon for the use of our theme song. It's Honey yes. Milk Island, and it's not off any album or anything. But you can find Leon's music including the recently released Bird World at soundcloud.com slash L-E-Y-A-W-N. Well, you, just did, you just did the one that I did ages ago. You said Lee Yawn. Yeah, that's, that's how the username is spelled. Anyway, that's No, that's right. Spelled. I said Lee Wayne. Damn it. Oh, God. What is it? Bye. Sorry. You know, how I, before the show, I was saying the wrong word every time, and now I'm mixing letters up in my head. Sorry about that <laughs> miscorrection. You are absolutely uh. talking over the theme right now. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.